Welcome everybody to part four. <laughs> Finally got it done. Uh, I do apologize. I honestly did not know how many parts this video was going to be. But now that we're finally here, um, I do want to go over one thing. Like I, I said in part three, cut the whole thing in Elmer's glue. But I do want to go over a little bit with you on what I mean by fully coat. Now I'm pretty sure you understand it pretty well, but um, let's see. Okay, so if you look at my Ultima Source right here. You're gonna see these little holes. That's from not being fully sealed. So that's not what you want. What you want is a nice smooth seal. Alright, so, and you might get those. What you can do, if after painting it and everything, you still have these little holes, just coat that with some more Elmo's glue. It'll seal it right up. Alright, so just make sure that you um, pick the right side and coat along the entire edge of all the seams. So make sure you do this. Just seal that right up, like that, smooth it out, fill it out. Another thing when you do this, it's going to crinkle, but that's no problem. Just push it down afterwards and it should be fine. Like this side, you can kind of see some crinkles here. They used to be puffed out, but just push them down after it dries. It should, it should be just fine. Also make sure you um, seal, like you can definitely see a hole uh, right there between the legs. So make sure you seal again all the points. And the last part I'm going to sh do here is um, to get the toes nice and good, just drop a little bit of glue in between and then use your exacto um, knife and just smear it like that. Okay. And also make sure to do the bottom of the feet. All right, so that's it for um, just giving you a little quick run of view of how to actually cover it all. Pretty simple. All right, and now we're gonna move on to painting. Woo! So I don't know exactly um, what colors to paint it right now. I I'm actually leaning towards the um, the original Jurassic Park Carnotaurus, um, but I'm also debating the Lost World one from the novel or this the red and black one. I'm leaning towards the red and black one, but again, it's the amount of paint I've got. So we'll just have to see. And um, again, I'm not sure exactly if you need this part for, but we'll just go over it. So pretty much after you act, finish do painting it. I'm also, I did a uh, little toe lines here, so you can see I drew the um, toes. So I um, know where to put my black marker to give the color for the nails and stuff. Now that I think about it, you're going to need this part because I need to show you to put the teeth in. So we're going to color it, we're going to paint it, and then we're going to finish it. And we'll be able to have ourselves a Carnotaurus! Alright, the final step, part four, painting. Now at this point, make sure you have everything cleaned up, sealed off sealed along the edges, especially along here. You might have to do a few coats just to make sure you have all of this area sealed nice and up. And then resealed. I had to do underneath the legs a little bit more. Still a little wet. But at this point, I'm ready to go. Now, what I want to do is make sure the eyes... I don't color the eyes when I go and paint it. And the colors I decided for is the original Jurassic Park T-Rex that uh, I believe Kenner came out with, with the original line. So for me to protect his eyes, I'm going to put a piece of tape over it, and then I'm using my X-Acto knife and cut in four corners to give him his eye. So you can do this or do something else, but this is how I do it. So and make sure you press down really good so when you pull it up, you won't have any major problems. And make sure you cut it. And make sure that you cut through all the different layers. And then when you peel it up, you should be left with a little hole, just like that. And that means the eye is covered. You could do the same with the nose, um, but I'm not going to. I can just darken that in when I'm done there. So now we move on to the other eye. 
Let's take the same piece of tape, apply it to his eye, cover it nice up, and do the same thing. And if you have some like um, glass eyes or something else that would work better, go ahead. Or if you're just going to um, do something different, that's fine too. I'm just showing you how I do it. Alright, now that the eye's covered, and I'm going to do a gray underbelly. So it's going to be completely painted red and sprayed underneath with a, um, a gray paint. And then I'm going to go through and just use a permanent marker to give him his black um, color over the red. So that's all I'm going to do. And to protect the bottoms of the legs um, from getting uh, the gray on them, I'm just going to put some tape over them, like so, so I can get both sides of the legs painted red and not gray, except I'm about to run out of tape, so I'll probably end up doing something a little different for the other side, so that's one thing I wasn't prepared for. Alright, so that's what you want to do, so when you paint, you don't get it on the feet at all. All right, so now we'll take it outside and we'll get to painting. I just finished spraying his belly. Um, and if you can see there, I made sure that the little letter B for the bottom is completely covered. And I'll probably spray that again just to make sure that's anything sealed up. And I'm not looking forward to making sure all the numbers are covered up with this red, but maybe I can use the blackness to um, fix that. So, see? And I'll paint his two other sides. Alright. Just wanted to show you, because it's very windy here today. I've had to put a lot of rocks around my car now, so it doesn't get all covered up. And you can also just pick this stuff up at Hobby Lobby. That's where I get all of it. Um, I'm not sure if I got this one at Hobby Lobby, but just get regular paint. Like the red one I showed you. Yeah, Hobby Lobby sells all of your stuff you're going to need, so... Alright, and make sure also to, you know, paint where it's not going to be any messes or anything. I just have the backyard, which is all rock. So. Alright. Alright, just showing you that I've just painted him top, well, one side red. And his belly's kind of been hit with some red too, unfortunately. But, it's okay. I probably, I can redo the belly quite easily. Um. The rest of him, not so much. So, yeah, he looks fine. There are, I mean, I can see some letters. Um, but nothing too much I can't handle. I might do, I don't have much in here, so, and I want to make sure I can cover them all the way. So, we'll just see how that works out. Alright, here I've fully painted him right now. He's pretty much just pale red. Um, I did give him a gray underbelly. And first I didn't film my painting of him just because it was too difficult to film and paint at the same time. But if you decide to do it this way, you can, or you can just use colors. Now to give him my contours his colors, I'm going to be using markers. Now I have to get rid of the, um, the little piece of paper on the eyes. And before we start putting on the rest of the detail, you're going to need to coat um, your paint, painter, your your contours in Elmer's glue. This will create a seal and uh, um, make it nice and protective. Also, um, see the tail here is nice and thick. That um, makes so that you can't break it or bend it. Makes it nice and durable. And the teeth are still not in because that is for me the very last step. And what you can do for the top jaw at this point, which um, you can separate if you go. Let's see if I can't show. Uh, it's kind of difficult to see, but there's a groove between the two pieces right here, and you just want to kind of push that over. Same thing on the other side. Um, just move it around so you can um, make sure you get the teeth up there. So my red is very sticky, so I'm going to make sure I coat it. 
And what I found is red and yellow paints don't really like to, well, hold together very well. So I'm going to get these little eye strips off and then paint the almond's glue over it. So let's see how well I do this without completely scratching it up. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. Got it. There we go. Got it. Okay, now we go over to the other eye. This one is definitely covered. But I got it. Oh. And there's his eye. Oh. Wow. This is this is eye. That that one turned out really nice. On the other side, um, turned out okay. And I don't really like this side as much because when the mouth open, you can see it kind of comes up like that. But look at the other side; it's pretty good. So I might do some trim on the other side. So at this point, I cover the entire thing in Elmer's glue again. And that's that's the simple step. Once it's all covered, let it dry, and once it dries, then put the markers over it. And also, um, for me, I had to wait a whole night just to make sure this is, was nice and dry. Um, some paints dry quicker than others, but mine, I just want to make sure it was nice and dry. So just do what you did with, you know, the um, when you had it all finished. Just start putting the Elmer's glue on and do this with all the areas um, over again and that's what you do um, so just coat everything and what you might notice um, also is that let me show you is um, the grooves here I mean if you look at this this is really nice and sealed there uh, same thing with the back side. It's really nice and sealed. This this side is really good. There's no holes or anything over here again. No holes, but right here you can tell that there is a hole and a little cut there. Don't worry about that. Just fill it with almost glue and it should be fine. So this is what I'm talking about. It's going to be inevitable that you're going to have some little holes um, in some areas, but it shouldn't be too bad. So again, just coat the whole thing and same thing with the eyes. Thing with the mouth, just cover the whole um, contours in Elmo's glue. And once you finish with that, we can paint it. And you don't have to paint, make yours exactly like mine, but I decided to go with the colors from the original um, toy from Jurassic Park, the first contours. So that's kind of what I based my colors on. So I'll check back in with you after we finish coating it. Alright, so just um, for if you're still painting it, covering it in elbow glue, this is just an extra little um, heads up. Um, look at this side, it's covered. If you look over here, it's not. So you can tell that the side that hasn't been covered is very shiny, unlike this side, which has been covered. And that's okay. Once you put the elbow glue covering it, it's going to um, become less shiny, which is just fine. That's what you want. And again, to get the tips of the toes done right, you just take your exacto knife and get it nice and smoothed out in there, just like that. And again, I would do um, about two layers over him, um, just to make sure you get all the shiny spots covered up. That's pretty much how you can tell if it's got some um, that if the paint's still showing through. So just make sure to get all the little grooves inside, underneath. You get, take your X-Acto knife, get it all nice and covered along the arms, as good as you want it, underneath on the back sides, here and here, and again this side. So just to kind of give an example, for this side at least, um, and also make sure to get, you know, just just seal all of it back up just like before so you're just gonna cover the whole guy once again in yeah I'm going to it just like so
And also at this point, you can see like this sometimes um, little uh, openings that are kind of around. It's not that bad, but at this point, you can use Elmer's glue to seal it all up. And again, it might take some coats if there's any holes or um, dents that you have. You might have to do a few different um, layers over it. And this process process takes quite a while, just because you let it dry, then reseal, let it dry, see what needs to be um, sealed up, see what spots you missed. So uh, painting um, can either painting and this can take either one day or to two days just to do this step. So this is quite a long step, and it's the last step to get it all done. So, um, yeah, just keep on putting a little bit down everywhere and coating it. That's all you do. So, again, coat the whole thing, seal it all up, do as many coats as you like at this point, and just make sure that the mouth can still move. Oops. Yeah, just make sure the mouth can still move. And once you've coated it all, we'll move on to finally putting the last details in. All right, so see you at that point. All right, we're now so close to the end. We're gonna start putting the teeth in. Now, I was suggesting to do the bottom ones first, but I'm gonna go through the top ones. Um, you're gonna have to kind of push them out a little bit to do this, but not too bad. So make sure you pick which two you want for your top, and make sure you have the colored side facing the opposite direction, so like, um, See how like this one's got some color on it, so make sure it goes this way, not here, because that way you want to see the color. And now to do this, we're going to take, I'm trying to see what I want to use, because these are quite small. I think we'll go with some Elmer's glue. Um, you just want to put a little bit right on the tip of the edge here. That's a little too much, but kind of just get it all wet. Uh, doesn't have to be too much. Uh, wipe what's ever left off on your fingers. And then you're going to flip your contour and you're going to find the little groove that's in there. Hopefully I can show you this properly. And you're going to find the little groove inside. You're going you're gonna to be fiddling with it a little bit, but okay, it sort of works. <laughs> You're going to have to, again, fiddle with it uh, to get it to fit in just so, 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 so. I'm going to do some trimming on it. Try again. And you have your tools to use to get the teeth right where you want them. Just push down. Hmm. Some of the paper came off of this one, so I'm going to try to push it. Okay, so while I'm fixing that one, I'm going to be pushing this plate between the two open a little bit more. Um, I've honestly never had this much of a problem getting these teeth in as I have this guy right now, so I mean, if, it looks like it's going pretty well, but I have to kind of space it out more than I thought I would have to. Okay, so let's go with round two. Get some glue there. Other way the excess on my fingers. And then, just gonna slip it right on in. Look at that. This one settled in right and nicely. See? Wasn't too hard for that side. So we're just going to let it dry and solid. Alright, we're at the moment that we finally cut out the teeth. And as you saw, I had to redraw the teeth because I made a mistake of drawing them too small, making it impossible to cut. So here was the one, you know, like the one I, that we had drawn. And. I mean, it doesn't look, it's not too bad, but I just didn't want to go with this one. So I decided to make four copies of the same one, and I just printed these off, 
drew one, then I printed it a few times to get more. Just glued it, just glued it onto the piece of cardboard, and we're ready to cut. So here we, I'll show you how to cut these out, and then once you cut them out, put some Elmer's glue on them. And again, using tiny scissors is really effective. I'm going to use the big ones to get these separated. And then we'll be putting the teeth in. So just trim the edges, like so. And then start cutting the little marks where the teeth are, like that. Just like so. We'll go back and do some cleanup once we've cut them out here. Okay. Just make sure we cut it all the way. Just keep on cutting away at them. Okay. Just keep on going. Make sure you cut all the way through them. Get rid of it. And see if there's any leftover. Now, this may not look that good when you look at it, but we turn it over and it should look a lot better. And that's the side that we're going to be um, showing. So, that's what you want to do. And for the bottom teeth, they don't have to look too good, um, but they should look reverently okay. So, just pick the two best ones that you have. And the side without the markings are the side that you want facing out. And because this is the bottom row of teeth, I'm going to trim it a little bit more because I want that just to sink right in. And hopefully I didn't cut it too small. And then at this point, I think I, think I did cut mine a little too small. Oops, probably should have checked. Oh well, I can make it work. Now just coat it in Elmer's glue. Let it dry, set it somewhere where it can harden up, and then do it with the next one. And once we're done with this, we'll put the teeth in. Alright, and then we'll finish coloring it. Right here. Push a little bit forward. And another thing you're going to do here is once it dries up, you want to push the teeth out. That way they're going to cover over this. So once the teeth have gone solid here, take your tools and pull the teeth outwards a little bit. So like, take the to tooth here and just move it like so, just like that. Do it with all the teeth. So just take them all and just move them out. It works better with this, so you're just going to want to push the teeth out like so. That's what you want. Use that way when the jaw closes, you have a nice teeth overlap. So, and once the bottom jaw is fully, you know, fixed, it will close up nice. So, all right. Let me just get the refixed other side tooth. Do do. Here's the other side that I just repaired. And I'm going to trim it, and then we're going to get it fit. Alright, here we go. And for this one, you can see I bent the teeth with my fingers already, just because that's easier. So, here we go with the other side. I'm putting the top on and putting the teeth in are two of the hardest steps. And also, the smaller you make it, the harder it is. So, if you made yours bigger, then yours is definitely going to be easier. I just wanted to fit this one on one piece of paper, so that's why I didn't go any bigger. Get this John opened up. I can't. It's hard for me to show you what I'm doing. Come on.
this these, these teeth aren't turning out that well. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's not too bad. It's not too bad I can do some work on them. But Okay, well, I'm definitely going to have to do some work on this upper jaw here. Um, once I fix it, I'll come back. Alright, I got the teeth in. <laughs> so there's that side, and there's that side. You can obviously tell which side was better done. So, a little frustrating with that, but it's how it worked out. Okay, dope. Now we have the bottom teeth to do. Uh, this is going to be it's just as fun as the top. So here is going to be a little tricky. Hopefully this works, and hopefully it works for you. Now for this, you're going to need your hot glue gun. You're going to shoot hot glue at the bottom, and then you're going to take the small teeth and pop them in. I'm going to use this to do it. And you had to work quick, so just pour your hot glue in. Take your teeth and put them in. Like that. And like that. There you go. Now I have to do some work <laughs> to get this whole thing working out because for some other reason this did not turn out exactly how my others turned out. So, well, I'll get some work on it. And you're going to have to fiddle around with the teeth to get the mouth to close. It's just how it works. So just fiddle around with the jaw and everything and it should work out. Okay, so after you get the jaw nice and worked out. So I showed you my pro skills. Um, we'll move on to painting it, and that's last step. So some fiddling. My tooth fell out. Ah! <laughs> well, I did get the teeth in there, and then it kind of just, this little tooth just popped out. Ay 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 ay. It is a little frustrating, and if you don't get frustrated with this part, that's awesome. That is pretty awesome, and I'm sorry if the filming here's a little difficult just because it's hard for me to actually do this on camera but um, I'm just having to re-glue the teeth back in here so give me a sec I'll come back okay I finally got the teeth in um, this side did not turn out that great this side turned out a lot better um, the mouth closes just fine, it opens just fine, closes, it works. Um, I'll just show you another one of my guys, really quick. So here is, I forget what it is, it's a hybrid dinosaur, but um, if you look at his jaw. <laughs> yeah, he works a lot better. Um, his eyes are a little derpy though. Yeah, but just kind of a nice little tongue that I gave him. So compared, um, he's not done yet, but yeah, the heads are about the same. I just don't maybe because the maybe because the mouth is so short, it was just really difficult to do. But in any case, it's just how it works out. So here I did some test coloring, just um, to see what kind of color, what kind of um design I want to give him. And this is more like the Jurassic Park colored one when the top of the Conotaurus is red and it's mainly black. But I'm going to go with my top design here instead. So I, for this step, I would suggest you have really, like brand new markers just so you get the color nice and good. Um, so just make sure you got that nice. And if you can see here, um, right here, it's not fully... Um, covered so I'm just going to show how to color one side and you can do the next. So this is my brand new black marker so I'm going to 
do my best to copy what I drew here for the um, colorization of my contours. And if you have your way of coloring your contours, by all means do it. If you spray painted your entire contours, if you um, did something different, that's fine. Just um, do what you're going to do with your carna, and I'll do what I'll do with my carna. So right now I'm just, you know, getting the um, different design shape that I want for him and I um, want to go over his leg here, so I'm going to do that. Just like so, have it come down like this. Continue along the tail, and I'm going to end the tail in a nice black um, type of color like that. And then for the legs, I'm going to do the same kind of design. Boom, 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 boom. And what I'm going to do right now is color the toenails. That's right. Because we want this car to have some colored toenails. So we're going to just color those right on up. Just like so. And the only um, uh, dinosaur that I have made that doesn't have any marker on it is my very first one I made. And that one's just all painted um, but all my other ones have um, color on it so if this is just an easy way to do it cut a little black little toe claws here on the back side do the same with the other side color the toes the other one And the other one. It's a little difficult to fit it in there. But it worked. Okay, so just do that. And I'm going to come back up to the horn. And be very careful. Yeah, that was pretty careful. I like the carnotaur I made here. I mean, it was pretty much free to make, um, I guess. I, you know, bought cereal to make it, I guess, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't go out and buy cereal just to make this, but, um, but pretty much, pretty much free. Pretty, yeah, besides time, it's pretty, pretty efficient way to get yourself your own, toy if you want one. And you can see how wide, wide I was opening the contour's mouth while I was filling with these lovely teeth it has. So you can definitely take your... Um, I forget what I was saying. Just lost my train of thought. I, I blanked out. I'm blanked out right now. All I know is I'm coloring a dinosaur. And now, what I also want to do is color his little tiny fingers. Just like that. Give him little tiny colors. You see his little finger? I'm going to do the same to the other side. Just give him a little bit of color on those fingers. And I also want to give him a little bit of stripes on his arms here. Color those in. And at this point, you just want to color this all in. Now, if you want to do the red all across the foot, you can. I'm not going to. I'm just going to color it to this point so I'm just gonna fill this all in um, like so uh, and then after I finish um, sealing in these colors I will go over it again with Elmer's glue so um, and also I had to count like one two three four five so that's five so over here I'll go one two three four and five then I'll do the same kind of... Whoops, I was off camera. Okay, back on camera. Woo! <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. So yeah, just start coloring it in. And you'll be all good to go. 
So I will check back in with you once um, you finish coloring your contours. And then there's one last thing you need to do. And it's very important. So finish coloring your contours. And after, again, once you finish coloring him or doing whatever you're going to do, again, cover, it, cover him in Elmer's glue just to seal it all in. And then we go move on to the last step. Okay, before I get any farther, make sure that you get these big pens. All right, they are wonderful. This is good for outlining, but it does not have the firepower like these. Oh, no boy, no boy, boy. So get your outline with this if you want to use an outline for this, or use an outline with this one. And I'll show you. I'll show you what I've done with the black marker. Oh, he's got a yellow eye right there. And oh boy, he looks beautiful. Or she, if you want to call it a she. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it. And that's all done with this one big black marker. With this, it was working, but I didn't get that shine, that pop that I wanted. But I, boy, got it with this. And again, it's very important that once you've covered it, let, let, the, let the black um, dry a little bit. And then once the black ink dries enough, cover it with Elmer's glue. Because if you don't cover it with Elmer's glue, it's going to smear and it's going to get on your hands and everything. So just make sure that you color it and make sure you don't get any black on your hand while you're coloring because you don't want to accidentally put it somewhere you don't want to. So, yes. Whew. I wasn't sure I liked it, but once this color got on it, even the bad side here, that this is the bad side, and it looks great. Oh, I love it. And the mouth opens fine. Oh, I am very happy how he's turned out. So happy. So just finish coloring it. I'm going to color the whole back here black. And oh, I really like this car now. Really much. All right. So again, there's still one more important step afterwards. So after you finish coloring it and putting your Elmer's glue on over it, we have one more final step. And I'll see you then. Um, yes. Okay. See you then. All right. This is it. The last parts, now just in case you were wondering, I, I made it, yeah, gave her yellow eyes. And I finished cov covering this all in Elmer's glue. We sealed it nice up. Now, the one thing that did happen when I did do it, it kind of smeared the um, marker a little bit. Not, like, really bad. But I just did a touch-up job in some of the places. Um, it still has a little bit of some spots here and there, but it's... It's good. It's good. The mouth can open really wide just because of how much work I had to kind of work in there. Also, this has a pretty big gap here. Um, you could, if you wanted to, you could cut a little piece out uh, out of any leftover cardboard, color it, spray paint or whatever, and slip it in right here if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it open. Well, I might. I, I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave it. But... He, she's all finished, and she looks beautiful. This is her from the top, just a nice black um, from the side. This is her actual, this is the side that I was saying that was messed up while I was working on her, you know, with the jaw piece here and stuff. But I actually like it. All painted, she looks beautiful. 10 out of 10. She does have a few little flaws here and there, but... <laughs> She turned out really lovely. Got her toenails all painted on the bottom as well. Her back claws are painted right here. And also, also, one important thing. Um, I used a pen and I gave her her little nose. So just make sure your um, pen works. So just rub it a little bit and then just Make your little dots for the nose, and then cover it in Elmer's glue to seal it so nothing happens to it. And then for the last step, you can... This is the final step that I do, is I put my initial, the date, and the year right on the foot. So go ahead and do that, and then once you do that, just put it, some Elmer's glue on that, and it's all done. Alright, there you go. Then just put some Elmer's glue on that, seal it up. And there you go. You're finished. I hope this um, 
video was helpful in making a carnotaurus. Um, maybe you made yours bigger. I made mine pretty small. I'll show you it um, compared to some other guys I've got here. Um, here's a little copy I made. So that's the size there. And here's a, oh, I don't know what its name is. I forget. Para, it's a parasol office, I believe. So that's kind of another size comparison. Oh. Let's see if I can't get a better shot. Stand them both up. Yeah, they're, about, they're actually exactly the same size lengthwise. Yeah, they're actually exactly the same. Um, and then just for measurement, just in case you guys are wondering how big mine is. Um, it stands approximately three and a half inches, around three and a half inches tall, and from head to tail, about ten and a half inches, around there, maybe a little shorter. But yeah, that's the, um, how to make your own Jurassic Park Carnotaurus. I made mine, again, smaller than other and then some others just because I wanted to fit the connotors on one sheet of paper and I guess I could have made it a little bit bigger but I'm making copies is what's easy you guys little toes little finger little hands painted yeah I like him I like him I give him a 10 out of 10 partially because he stands he stands much better than my pair here now the pair kind of has to go on his tippy toes to stand um, and the pair has full articulation, but it doesn't stand right. So, contours, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, again, if you like this video, don't forget to smash a like. And if you want to see some other um, how-to videos, um, let me know. And oh, I don't know how to really end it, so I'm just going to say thank you for watching. And um, I'll... Smash that like button and greatly appreciate you checking it out. And I hope this um, helped you. And I again apologize in case I wasn't completely clear on some things. And I'm sorry um, if the jaw was a little fidgety. Um, if you need some more clear on how this jaw works, I could show you um, the Ultimasaurus or the Ultimasaurus jaw, and maybe you can see how that works. But if you, if you figured it out, then that's great. Um, but if you have any anything else, let me know. And thank you for watching. Have a great day. And um, yours will probably turn out really good too. So give yourselves a thumbs up and applause for your hard work. And good job on yours. And um, yeah, it's a little frustrating just because of the size. But again, if you made yours bigger, it's fine. So, okay. Thank you again for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Um, bye.